Well, hello there, and welcome to MoFo RC. Today, we are going to attempt to install, or rather at least just show you, how you would install the new MoFo RC plus seven and a half axles. These are going to be the beast modish uh, most awesomely bad awesomeness axles, I don't know what else to say about them, that you can find and you will be able to purchase. They will come in this little plastic hard case. This little plastic hard case will house both a front and a rear axle. They will also house uh, the little hardware packs that come with them. You can also buy this in a different variation where it will be a front and a front axle instead of a front and a rear axle. So there is that as well. Now these are a plus seven and a half ish millimeter plus eight ish, whatever you want to call them. They're pretty close to a plus eight. They're plus seven and a half ish <clears throat> per side. That means you're going to have about an extra 15 millimeters when you install this on your truck. Uh, it will be an extra 7.5 ish millimeters per side further than it was before and you will not have the scrub radius that you would if you were using an extended axle shaft. An extended axle shaft sticks out farther here or uses a big brass hex extender that sticks out further and a barrel nut or something like that to give you the extra distance that you would want for more width of your truck your wheels sticking out the side of your truck more width would be processed via either the extended axle shaft or the extended axle these are extended extended axles so the difference being these are going to be a lot different than an scx 24 axle current is these have a much larger cvd shaft um I don't know, three times, two and a half, three times the diameter of a standard SCX24 CVD shaft. They do have a pretty much full 45 degrees-ish of turning radius, and they are very smooth, so you don't have to worry about binding or lumpy steering when you hit the gas or drive shaft bouncing back and forth or anything weird like that. You just go ahead and install these and go. It is going to come with, in this little baggie, a variant of the best servo mount ever. You've seen these everywhere. Mofo RC is the one that made these, but a lot of people have stolen the design and sell them. This is a little bit different because this one actually mounts to the top of your front axle or your rear axle if it is a two front axle axle steerings, two steering axles rig, you will go ahead and use the two screws in the middle to secure this to your front axle. But you don't want to do that first <clears throat> because you will also need to de decide where these little servo posts are going. Uh, depending on your servo, how long it is, what angles you have, you can move this little post, the upright here, forwards or backwards to different positions to get more or less servo sticking out forwards or backwards. That being said, I'm going to push all of that out of the way for now. And we're going to focus on these axles. These axles are a little bit different. Uh, when I say that, they come with a baggie full of a lot of hardware. Um, this hardware is going to include some nuts, some bolts, some O-rings, and some little brass balls. The little brass balls are going to be needed for this install. Uh, on every single link you have and every single shock you have that goes to the axle, except for these two front ones that go to this best servo mount ever tray. Your front upper links, you will not need to install these balls onto. Everything else going to the axle, the shocks, 
and your links, front and rear, shocks and links will require one of these little brass balls to be installed in your links. So you can use stock links or you could use aftermarket links. And these little balls should fit all of them. Let me find something to dump these into so I don't lose them all. Um, now the reason why you will need these blink balls is because uh, the screws are bigger. And the screws are bigger because bigger screws equals more stronger. More stronger via bigger screws uh, means less breakage whether you are on the trail or running competitions. I am going to use this handy dandy MoFo RC parts tray. I'm not going to go ahead and install the magnetic part yet because I'm just gonna dump all this in here like so and we won't worry about the magnet right now. So these link balls are specially made uh, they have the tiny little end. I don't know if you can see it. They have a bigger end on the other end, another side of them. They have one big end, one small end, and they have your center ball. The center ball should be, and let's find out if it is. Boy, I'm unprepared. Give me one more second. And a set of links aftermarket and in theory this is the very first time I've tried this you are watching this currently on camera the first time we're installing this version 3 or 4 prototype of these axles uh, why is there so many prototypes you ask because we want to make sure it is perfect when you get it rather than having to send you something that is subpar and you complaining about we want these to be perfect so i've got a pile of aftermarket shocks here i've got some aftermarket links here we're going to go ahead and find out if these fit like they're supposed to so in this bag of shocks we also have our stock m 1.4 link balls and o-rings those will still go on the top of your shock or if you flip it upside down that would go on the bottom depending on how you like to run your shocks they will either go on the top or the bottom but the side going to the axle will take one of the balls that came with the axle now there's two ways you can do that um, what I like to do I like to run one single o-ring um, it allows a little bit more movement now at the same time, it also will not be as tight as putting both O-rings on, but I'm gonna put one little O-ring on the small end of that shock ball using my fat thumb, like so. So I now have one small O-ring on the small end of the shock ball. You can see the bigger end here the smaller end there, the O-ring is on the smaller end, and the shock ball will not fall out now because the O-ring is on the smaller end. When I go to install this, I'm not gonna install it, well, I might go ahead and screw it on right now, but I'll take it right back off. But what you would do is you would go ahead and use the big end facing outwards. And when I say big, I'm talking about the diameter of that ball. The small end harbors the O-ring. The big end does not need an o-ring you can put an o-ring on there to make it tighter if your rig is too loose 
But if your rig is not too loose, just use the one O-ring and you will receive more articulation and freedom of movement throughout your rig. So let's go ahead and let me check this hole here. Here we go. I think I got the right screw here. Seems to be correct. Let me make sure of something real quick. I might be lying to you guys right now. That is, what is that? Is that 1.4 or 1.6? Nope, that's definitely a 1.6. Okay, so these link balls are drilled out to 1.6. <clears throat> uh, 1.6 just being a thicker screw than a 1.4, which is why that tool would not turn the screw when I tried to tighten it. So, you see how that fits on there? It works, you have movement side to side and up and down, just like you should because your axle is gonna be moving in all sorts of different directions as you are articulating. So if you had two rings on there, two O-rings on there, you may not get the full range of motion before your shock, whatever shock you're using. These are the MoFo RC, extremely long double barrel style shocks, dual springs. Um, you might not get that full range of motion on there if you put both O-rings on, which is why I just put one O-ring on. Because both O-rings, this is much tighter and only moves like that. And if your rig is trying to stress against moving, it can put extra pressure on that inner barrel and the shaft and cause binding. So I use one O-ring. You don't have to, but that's how I do it. I'm going to go ahead and remove that because I, I know it does in fact work. I'm going to set that over here to the side and I'm going to grab one of these trusty, dusty, musty, handy fancy uh, links. These are MoFo RC black brass links. This is a whole black brass link kit for a Jeep or C10. Why is it for a Jeep or C10? Because I have a brand new C10 right here that it is going on. So these axles will be going on that brand new C10. What I need to do first, as you can see here, if I was to try to install this rear link to this rear axle, it will fit there just fine and dandy. But the problem is gonna come when you try to install this screw here, it does not fit. The screws included with the MoFo RC axles do not fit in a standard 124th scale SCX24, AX24. Whatever you're using that would normally require an M1.4 screw, it is not going to fit. How do we remedy this, you ask? We will rip off this tiny O-ring from the outside of this link. Drop it right in the bin mixed with the other O-rings. That's not what you're supposed to do. Set this tiny link ball to the side and take one of the new and included with the axles, link balls. That should fit perfectly in your stock or aftermarket links, depending on what you're using. I am using aftermarket. Uh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna install just one O-ring on here because I'm a savage. I like a loose rig. So I'm going to install one O-ring on there and I'm going to stick it in this hole right here and it should fit and it does. Then I'm going to take one of these included screws, that one's too long, and I'm going to slide it through this hole that you can't see because my fat fingers are in the way. I'm going to slide it all the way through that link ball and then I'm going to proceed to tighten it with my handy dandy MoFo RC and 1.5 driver. Boom, it is tight. We have a link flopping around down here with lots of movement in all directions. Just like you would want on a loose rig. Now, if you want a tight rig, put both O-rings on. If you don't want a tight rig, use one. You're gonna have to do the same thing. Now look, on this side, you don't have to do it because this is going to your skid plate and your skid plate probably does not have an M1.6 screw hole. 
Your skid plate probably has an M1.4 screw hole. Then we're going to find the corresponding link for the rear upper, just like this one right here that says MOFO RC on it. It's made out of brass. It's heavier than an aluminum link would be. We're going to do the same thing at the back of the link. You're going to note the orientation where it says MOFO RC. This is going to be the back. I'm going to pull off one of these little O-rings, like so. Drop it right back in the bin of my O-rings, as well as that ball, which should go to the side. Uh, now this one, being up here, it is a non-captured on the rear. By the way, this rear axle does have already included, built into it, a rear link riser with several different mounting positions you can choose from. There is five different mounting positions you can choose from in your rear link riser that is included and it is a one-piece design with the axle housing so it will not come loose it will not fall off it will not snap off it is very strong now being that i'm installing this on a non-captured and when i say non-captured there is not two ends such as right here there is two ends and it captures it up here there is only one end and nothing else so I'm going to install this with the big ball, the big end of the ball, the larger diameter size facing outwards from the axle. Then I will put my single O-ring on the small end of the link ball, like so. The small end will be captured by an O-ring. The large end will be captured by the large end. The large end will not allow the link to fall off. Uh, I'm just going to randomly stick this in here for now because I have no clue where I'm going to set it up at yet. I'm just going to pick a hole and install it like so. If I can get my driver in there. Here we go. Go ahead and snuggy duggy that up. You do not need to over tighten any of these. If you are worried about them coming loose, use a little bit of Loctite. Important note that I forgot to tell you already. Before you go ahead and put all these links on like I've been doing just now, uh, you will probably want to take off this diff cover here. The diff cover is on the inside of the axle. Separate these screws you are removing so you do not mix them with your other pile of screws you already have. Go ahead and pull off these four screws, just four, only four. We're going to pull these off. And then you're going to check a couple things here. Check here. Uh, probably before you pull them off. Let's see how much looseness you have in this top shaft. Okay. Then we're going to take this cover off. We're going to take a little peaky gander at here and we're going to see there is zero O-rings on installed on this top gear. So what I'm going to do, I am going to install one O-ring out of my pile of O-rings here onto this top gear right here i'm just going to put it on the back one because i like to have a little bit more meat sticking out the front then i'm going to slide it back in there like so and put that back on and check it one more time oh make sure you do not forget the bearing that is a pretty important part stick that back on there check for your in and out oh we are perfect barely any but just a tiny bit of movement there so it's not going to be binding because of the o-ring and it's not going to be too loose and causing you to i don't even know what you would call it rock forward or rock backwards depending on when you let off the gas falling back or if you're on this side of the hill falling forward a little bit when you let off the gas um <coughs> driveline slack so in here we have a brass gear we have a steel gear here. These will wear out. Uh, we do sell these in steel. These do not come with them in steel. We wanted this to be nice, smooth, upgradable from the start. So 
you're going to get this. This is going to be brass. If you don't like it, buy a steel one. Um, the brass, as we've seen with the SCX24, will last a very long time. And you will not need to upgrade that for a very long time. Especially if you use a very good grease. Such as this Cow RC Utter Butter that we are going to be installing on this gear set right now. So I'm going to take my steel gear here. I'm going to smudge some of that Utter Butter grease on there. I'm going to use something like a toothpick or like this tool right here that has a broken tip on it that I don't use for anything else anymore. I'm going to smear some grease on there. You don't want to overdo the grease. You just kind of want a light coating of it on there. And that should be just plenty for a good long time. Now that I've got the grease on there, that should be enough to lubricate this whole thing. But if you're worried about it, just smear a little bit on there too. Um, you can kind of do this however you want. Use your own personal preference for however much grease you like to put on things. I don't like to overdo it because overdoing it causes a little bit of friction. But you could do it either way. Now that that's back in there and installed, I'm going to go ahead and put these four screws back in. And now we have a greased up differential and one missing screw. There it is. Put that screw back in there. Snuggy duggy these back up. And uh, same thing as before, you don't want to over tighten any of these screws. Um, you just want to lightly snug them. You can see I'm turning them by the shaft. I'm not even using the handle to turn these yet. I'm getting them in there, snugged. Get all four of them kind of in there and snugged. Then I'm just going to give them a light eh, 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 eh. And I'm going to check this. We have, oh, it feels so good. Just a teensy weensy bit of play. It's extremely smooth. It feels wonderful. So, what I would do next, uh, let's see here. Let's talk about the front one. Front one, you are going to do the same thing as we just showed you for the rear. Repeat steps, whatever those were for the other side. Uh, repeat the steps of greasing and if you need to adding an o-ring or two to these if you plan on adding two o-rings uh, do not use the o-rings that are included in here these are a little bit bigger than a normal o-ring for your differential would be if you're going to add two and add one to each side um, best bet's going to be pulling apart your original axle ox axle and taking this top gear out and removing both of those tiny little o-rings that are on there and putting them onto this new gear. Uh, that would be your best bet if you're going to do that. Otherwise, just use, like I showed you earlier, the one o-ring on the back side, the side facing the outward of your rig. All right, not the part that connects to the drive shaft the opposite side of the drive shaft where that bearing is. Take the bearing off, put the little o-ring on, put the little bearing back in, stick the shaft back in. Rewind that if you need to hear that again. Um, you should have perfect clearance doing that with the one o-ring. Otherwise you could use the two, one on each side. Um, the two, we do sell those on the website. I think it's like two bucks maybe. For a set of those as well if you wanted to buy those at the same time you don't have to you can use one of these but if you want to you can same thing here you're going to pull this apart um, you're going to grease this little guy you could also just dip it in here like so give it a little spin kind of like that just ram a lamb it back in there like that you could even spin it by hand first if you want make sure the grease covers the whole gear and if you're not satisfied with the grease covering the whole gear, you can give it another little spin in here like so. Stick it back in and uh, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So I'm going to go ahead and install this rear cover again or front cover or whatever you want to call it. The cover that is removable. Put these four screws back in here like so. 
And give them a little snuggy duggy after you finger tight them in there. Dun, dun, dun. Finger tight. Finger tight. Just by the shaft, finger tight. Because realistically, finger tight is all you're ever going to do on any of these parts. If you need more than that, use Loctite. Now, finger tighted by the shaft, now finger tighted by here. And uh, when I say finger tighted, I mean just snugged. Don't crank anything. There is no need. And uh, you know what? I totally forgot to put that little O-ring on. So I'm going to pull this back off. Good thing I didn't crank that on really tight. Or I might have a problem getting these off. So go ahead and watch me do this over again. Here's a good point to uh, check and make sure if you're installing these right now that you didn't just make the same mistake I did. Now I'm going to pull the little cap off, set it here, pull this guy back out one more time and I'm going to cram one of these O-rings on the back of this shaft right here without a bearing. See the bearing on the front? There's no bearing on the back. I'm going to put the O-ring on before I slide it into the bearing that is still inside the axle housing. Now that that is in there, I'm going to put this back on without dropping my screws everywhere. Like so. Finger snug and then finger snug again on the second go round. I'm just going kind of in a cross pattern or star pattern or whatever you want to call it. I'm going diagonally from screw to screw. Start with the bottom one is what I'm doing. And now I'm going to the top one diagonal from the bottom one. Now I'm going across to the other one. Now I'm going down to the very bottom one again in a diagonal pattern. Finger snugged and now I'm going to just go ahead and snug snug. Finger snug from the handle. The second go round. And for the 15th time, if you're worried about it, use a little bit of Loctite. Give it a little spin. Make sure it is still smooth. And it is so smooth. Oh, that is smooth as can be. By the way, if you were installing an overdrive gear in here, that would be the perfect time to install the overdrive gear. While you are already greasing this up, uh, if you were going to do overdrive in the front, or if you were going to do an underdrive in the rear, or if you're going to do a combination of both an underdrive in the rear and an overdrive in the front, or if you're building a monster truck or something and you're doing an overdrive and an overdrive, that would be the perfect time to do those. <clears throat> Next, we still have a pile of link balls and O-rings and a pile of links that we have not installed yet. Uh, <clears throat> let's go ahead and find <clears throat> the upper front links. These are going to be the shortest link in the package of your links. And I'm just going to pull these out and set these to the side because we don't have to do anything with those. Those require zero. Here's my other two rear links. Um, here is my two front lower links. I'm going to pull these out of the package like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and quickly pop this ball out. And these are going to be the balls after the curve if you have high clearance links such as these. And when I say the curve, I mean the short curve. So don't go to the long far end. The long far end is going to go to your skid plate. The short curved end will go to your axle. I'm going to go ahead and take the little o-ring off of there like so. This helps to have fingernails when you're doing this. Uh, maybe you have a small child with long fingernails or a wife, girlfriend, uh, anybody else you might know. Or if, if you have long fingernails, you could go ahead and do like I'm doing right now. I haven't clipped my fingernails in a week or so. And you just kind of dig your fingernail between the O-ring and the ball and yank. And you can peel those off like so. Oh, I missed that one, didn't I? No, I got it. Okay. I don't know where it went, but I got it. So I took again, I took out the one on the short end of the curve off. Link ball on the short end of the curve is off. These are going to be the ends going to the axle. 
Now, when you install the captured ones, it really doesn't matter which way you install the link ball, but just for uniformity, I'm going to go to the side that says Mofo RC, and I'm going to install the big end through the side that says Mofo RC. Big end, you see the ball does not fall out. If I installed the small end through the side, it would fall right out. So I'm going to install the big end of the link ball into there so it does not fall out. Then I'm going to put my finger on this side of it. I'm going to grab one O-ring. You could do two O-rings if you want, like I've told you. I'm going to go ahead and stick one O-ring on. If you wanted to do two, after you get that small O-ring, the small side O-ring on, light pressure on the back side, grab one more O-ring, put it on your finger, stick it over the hump, and just shove and wrap your finger around and you'll get the O-ring on. I'm not gonna put this one on, but that would be the easier way to do that. So there's one, I'm gonna find my Mofo RC logo. I'm gonna drop the ball in with the big end so it does not fall out of the link. I'm gonna find an O-ring in my pile of stuff. I'm gonna put the O-ring on just by rotational shoving with my thumb. Uh, I don't think I would recommend you having your girlfriend or small child try to put those back on, but taking them off, kids and wives and girlfriends or men with long fingernails and weak fingers could easily take those off, but you need a strong calloused man finger to shove them back on sometimes. Or, you know, a strong callous lady finger if your lady works on a farm or something. Those two front lower ones are done. We still have two more rear ones. I'm going to find the logo. There's the logo. I don't need to worry about the logo yet because I still got to peel these O-rings off. So I'm going to jam my long fingernail behind the O-ring and peel it off. And if you can't get your fingernail behind it, you could also use like a, uh, a knife, like a really sharp razor knife or a pair of toenail clippers, or tweezers, or several other ways to get that off. This one's being kind of tricky. But uh, best case scenario, if you can get it off your fingernail and not have to look for a bunch of stuff or risk stabbing yourself with a razor blade. There's that logo, Mofo RC. Here's my small end of the ball. Small end of the ball falls into the side with the logo facing up. Put my finger on the fat end of the ball. Grab an O-ring. Shove it onto the ball. Like so, and it just fell off. I did not get it on all the way. Uh, do this over a workbench or a work mat or something so you can find it. If it falls off, make sure it's captured. It is captured. The small end O-ring will hold it in. The big end of the brass will hold it in. It will not fall out. <clears throat> Last but not least, the rear upper link. These you will want Mofo RC facing out, but you also have to do directionally side to side. I've already got one on there that says Mofo RC on the right side of my axle. Now I need one on the left side of my axle. So I'm going to make sure the Mofo RC is facing up. Then I'm going to go to the rear of it, rip off that little O-ring, drop it over here, pull that ball out, drop the new ball in. This is pretty imperative. The big end you will want on the outside on your rear non-captured link. Um, same thing for the fronts. When you're doing a front non-captured link uh, or a shock, you will want to do the same thing. The big end you will want on the outside. Otherwise, as the O-ring wears out, once the O-ring fully wears out and breaks, your link will just fall off the ball. So make sure, um, and you know, shocks, they don't always put the link balls on from the factory in that orientation. Shocks or links. So check them. Um, check your front ones. We've got a set of front upper ones here. This would be considered the right front, and it does have the correct big end 
where you would want it on the right front. Let's look at the left front. Oh, look at there. The left front also has the correct big N on the MoFo RC link I'm holding here in both my hands. Both would be captured so that when you put the screw in, even if the O-ring goes bad, the link will not fall off. That is what you want. Um, if yours are backwards, go ahead and pull that O-ring off, pop the ball around the other way, put the O-ring back on. I'm just going to leave all four of these O-rings on here because I don't feel like taking them off. Same thing with these other links. I don't feel like taking all these O-rings off. Um, if it's too tight, I can always go back later, pull them off, do what I need to do. Then you're just going to go ahead and repeat steps, whatever these were, and uh, stick your linky dinky inside this hole here. Find the screw that corresponds with the length of your linky dinky. And these are M1.6 screws for these axles. And I just dropped it. And uh, you're going to slide it through that little hole very carefully like I have the wrong screw. Never mind. There's the screw. Slide it through that little hole just like so till it touches the other end that is threaded. Find your H, I don't know what, hex H, 1.5. 1.5 millimeter hex tool. Go ahead and snug that just lightly. And uh, then we just have the other side of this rear axle, which is going to be this one right here. I'm going to find that one ball I just installed that would correlate with the other side. Find my screw that correlates with this. Stick it through the hole. And I'm going to install it. Just in the same hole opposite the other side that I did earlier. And uh, if these, if I need to come back later and readjust the angle, if the angle of the dangle don't look right, I can always come back and just unscrew these and screw them back in in a different hole on the link riser to get the correct pinion angle I'm looking for, which is going to move this forward or backwards like so. So if your pinion is like that, when you're sitting straight up and down and your drive shaft is pointing at the ground, you don't want that. You'll want to go back further until it is either straight or a little bit facing upward towards that way. You do not want it facing in the dirt. So either straight or a little bit of a hint upward is fine. Not facing in the dirt is how you want it. And that's going to be a lot of different things that change that. How high your shocks are, uh, how low your center of gravity is. A lot of things will change that angle. So just pay attention. Try to keep that pinion angle pretty close to a straight drive shaft when it's fully installed. Unless you're going for like a serious front canted axle. You know, if you want your front really far canted for serious steering angle, you know, you may have it facing towards the dirt a little bit. Uh, and that could be okay as long as you're, you know, up above the transmission or close to the transmission. If you're way the heck down here and your drive shaft's like that, you're not going to hook up. So, you know, frames way up here, things down there, it's not going to work. You need to have it up here more to do that. Uh, next thing I would do would be installing all these links and installing this best servo mount ever tray that comes with this axle. But uh, currently I do not have all the stuff I need to do that sitting here on the bench and I'm not going to dig for it all right now. But in this pile of screws over here, there is a couple tiny little screws that come with this tray. Now, what I would tell you not to do is what I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to show you for the sake of showing you. This screw here goes through these holes here on top and this hole here. Oh, you know what we'll do? We'll just go ahead and install the little upright post on it and just for the fun of it to show you where they go. All right, so I'm going to find one of these longer screws that comes with everything in the servo mounting hardware pack. I'm just going to install, install them right in the middle, uh, assuming that's where I'm going to want it, even though it might not be. I'm going to install my servo upright post in the middle. Now, if you're using one of MoFo RC's newer servos, you will not tighten these screws all the way yet. The screws going into the post, you will not tighten all the way until you put the servo kind of sort of on. Um, 
you would want to get this on here, get the servo mounted on, and then kind of come through the bottom to snug them if you can. Um, if not, the best thing would do, just snug them most of the way, don't tighten them all the way, then put the screws in for the servo. The screws in for the servo will pull the tension on here as you put them in. So there are several ways to do this, but one way will work best. Figure out the one way that works best for you and do that. Uh, and the reason for that is the MoFo RC servos are a little bigger than other servos. And the reason they're bigger is because the case dimensions are just slightly larger. And they're slightly larger because the motor is fully encapsulated, enclosed, whatever you want to call it. And there is O-ring seals in the motor and casing housings to keep water from coming into your servo to allow it to last longer. So I got those on there. Those were M, not M. There were M1.4 screws, which use an 050 driver. Now I'm gonna go back to my 1.5 driver with that fat M2 screw. And I'm going to install this tray onto this axle. I'm not gonna tighten the first screw all the way yet. I'm just gonna get it in there and mostly down. Put the second screw in. I'm gonna get that in there and mostly down. Once I get that one mostly down, I'm gonna go back to the other one. Snug it. Snug the first one. And here we have a fully completed front axle minus the servo. Uh, these do come with nuts and hexes. Now, the thing about these nuts and hexes are, the nuts they come with currently look like these weird brass nuts that I'm showing you right now on camera. These are not nylon lock nuts. These are also not SCX24 nuts. So what you will need to do if you, when you install a wheel onto this using this brass nut, you will use a little bit of Loctite either on this shaft here or on this nut. You will get it on there, get your tire and wheel on there, tighten it down and just lightly snug, feel your tire and wheel, make sure it moves back and forth just a little bit with no tension. If you have tension, back that off just a hair until you have no tension on there and it moves just a hair, then let the Loctite dry. Same thing for the other side. You could also take these off and toss them if you don't want to use these. Um, you could use uh, you could use a TRX4M axle, or not axle, TRX4M axle wheel shaft nut. Uh, these little brass nuts do have a 4.0 millimeter hex on them, just like your stock SCX24 would, which allows you to use a small driver that will fit most wheels that you want to put on these. Um, if you use a TRX4M nylon lock nut, you will need a bigger driver, which is gonna be more surface area on the outside, and it may not fit every wheel out there available. So choose wisely the way you wanna do it, which wheels you have, what fits. Try it with these first. If you don't like them, get some TRX4M nuts and see if they fit on your wheel. So that is how you install your wheel nut. Um, you got your servo linkage here. It is already all put together and installed for you. Uh, you would just go ahead and stick your servo on there. Connect this top tie rod thing here to your servo horn. Make sure you got your horn straightened out so the wheels are as close to center as possible. Start from that, make sure at your controller it says zero on the throttle trim. Get it zero, get this zeroed as close as you can to zero. Then, when you get it running, turn that little throttle trim button to get it exactly zeroed out and centered. <clears throat> now, cool thing about these axles, as well as everything else I've just showed you, these are going to use... These are going to use your... <clears throat> TRX4M parts. 
on the outer here. So at MoFo RC currently, we already have a ton of TRX4M parts for your C-hubs and your knuckles. These will use C-hubs and knuckles from a TRX4M. Uh, if you happen to break one of these CVD shafts, which is highly unlikely, but if you do, these will also use a TRX4M shaft, your CVD shaft. So super huge, awesome, 1 18th scale axle shaft CVD with 45 degrees of steering at least in here. Uh, inside a 1 24th scale widened 15 millimeters total plus seven and a half per side axle housing. Um, all the TRX 4M parts on the outer parts, like I was saying, will fit. Your hex extenders will be TRX 4M. Your Nuts, wheel nuts will be TRX4M or the brass included ones. Your C hubs that can unbolt from here are also TRX4M. You could add brass C hubs to it. Your knuckles here on the outside. We have two different styles currently available at Mofo RC. Um, both in brass, this one comes aluminum, but if you wanted to add more weight to it, you could purchase either the standard size brass one or the big fat heavy brass one we have. Both of those will fit with all this same hardware and steering link that's already on here. It's a very high clearance steering link. It's way up at the top of the axle. You're not gonna ram this into very much unless you're trying to go somewhere you should not be going. Uh, and even then it is very low profile as well. So you don't have to worry much about your steering linkage getting in the way at all. Everything should be amazing with these axles, they are extremely freaking smooth. Um, they already have a best servo mount ever that comes with them mounted right here on top. Uh, full bearings throughout, rearward dropout for your removals of gearings and whatever you want to change there. Uh, M1.6 hardware for your links minus these two upper ones. Um, everything else is going to be M1.4 for your shocks. Make sure you change out your shock balls, all the lower ones, to these included M1.6 shock balls, just like your links. You've already watched the video. You know what you're supposed to do. Change them all out. Get it all put together. Enjoy never busting an axle shaft again and having tons and tons of very smooth steering. Thank you for watching very much. Uh, in the next video, we will go ahead and install these onto probably this C10 right here. We will also install something else very cool laying around here somewhere that I can't find and you can't see right now either. We have a bunch of cool things we're gonna show you. We're gonna do a build of this C10, starting with axles, moving up next to motor and ESC and some, maybe some shocks and just kind of going from there. Uh, we will see how the build turns out in the future. I think it's gonna be freaking amazing. I think you're all gonna love it. I love it already. Thank you for watching and goodbye.